What is going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to another episode of the NATO vs. Warsaw Pact group build. Today, we are cracking into our SU-15, and I am very excited to see what we can do. Now, off camera, I've been doing some reading, learning a little bit more about the SU-15, and I gotta say, this is a really neat interceptor. Very, very interesting history. One of the nice things about my reference material is it does have in the very back of the book a little section about the model kits themselves, and it does go over this particular version. And they're not exactly flattering. There's, I guess, a lot of trouble with different shapes, a lot of missing detail, just a lot of little bits and pieces that don't really add up to being a 100% stellar model. But that's okay, we're gonna see what we can do anyway, because I'm not a rivet counter, I just want to make it look close. I've also been doing a little bit of research on paint, and that is not an easy topic. Now, I have this color right here for the internals. This is an emerald green color, and I really like the look of this, but I don't really think it's going to be correct for this particular aircraft. Now, if we go ahead and just take a look at the color itself, you will see, yeah, it's a really nice looking paint. But I don't think I can use this. I think this is actually a little bit more for MiG aircraft, and I think it would be more applicable to later aircraft like MiG-31s, MiG-25s, stuff like that. I think that's a little bit closer. Here it actually calls out a light blue gray color and I'm not really sure what to use for that. So I'm still kind of struggling with what colors to go ahead and use. I have this color right here which is a kind of a bluish gray which I think might work pretty well. So I might use this. I don't know what color it is because I've lost a label. I do know it's the aqueous color line. And I have this color right here, which is just a light blue, and that I think is way too blue, but I might be able to use it for maybe a contrast color or something. I don't really know what I'm going to do about paint. But all that aside, doesn't really matter right at this point, because today I want to go ahead and just start some basic assembly. What I really want to focus on is trying to do a little bit of added detail. Now, I'm not going to be able to get this thing 100% correct, not without at least going out and buying a new cockpit tub and a lot of the resin add-ons. I'm not really interested in doing that right now for this particular version, so instead, we're going to work with what we have. So let's go ahead and queue up a quick time lapse. We're just going to make some really quick assemblies. We're going to put together the front nose wheel bay. We're going to put together the cockpit, the ejection seat, and then, of course, the intake trunkings and anything else I might find. So let's go ahead and get on that, see what we can do. All right, everybody, moving right along, this is our next hurdle. So we can see the cockpit tub is pretty much devoid of detail. Now, the detail that's in there is very soft and not very correct. Now, in the actual SU-15, there should be a lot of consoles and panels and switches along the side walls here of the cockpit tub, and here we have none of them. Also, the ejection seat, it kind of pales in comparison to the real-life ejection seat. You can see there is not a lot of detail in this thing. It's not horrible. I've seen far worse, but there's not a lot of harnesses. There's not a lot of wiring attached to it. There isn't any 
any sort of detail really on the sides of the headrest. There should be a lot more than there is. That's unfortunate. Much like the seat, the instrument panel is also devoid of most of its detail. So you can see there are no dials, there are no gauges, there's nothing. That is all basically just one decal you just slap on there and call it a day. I don't really like that idea, but it is what it is. Now we go ahead and place it here inside the cockpit tub. We can get an idea of how this actually is supposed to look. Not really any detail. We don't have any rudder pedals. There's just nothing in there. I honestly think it's way too cramped, and I think we should actually try to figure out a way to move that maybe a little bit more forward. Now looking at my references here, there's an image I found online about a whole walkthrough here on the SU-15, and we can see there's a lot more space between the seat and the front instrument panel. And I just don't get that impression with this. It looks like it's way too cramped, way too sandwiched together. I wanna to go ahead and use as many real life photos as I can to kind of spice up this cockpit as much as I can without going out and spending a bunch of money on a resin insert, which I don't really wanna do right now. But as you can see, there's a definite gap between seat and front console. So I wanna go ahead and see if I can add detail and see if I can't move this front console back towards the front of the cockpit tub maybe about here or something, somewhere where it gives you a little bit more impression of some space between the pilot and the actual instrument panel itself. So something right around here, maybe kind of move that forward. What we're gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna just dry fit and make a quick mock-up of the fuselage and see if I can't figure out how everything goes together. Now let's go ahead and tape up some of the fuselage sides here with just a quick mock-up. Like I said, it's always a good idea to kind of test fit your parts. And with this kit, there doesn't seem to be a lot of locating tabs that kind of hold everything together. There are a few, but they seem to be very far spaced. Now, since we are ready to go, let's go ahead and drop that cockpit tub where it's supposed to go, which is in the front here, right about, yeah, right about here. Drop that in, there's a little ledge that it sits on. And we can also tape up the very front of the nose to make sure that we give a little bit of pressure on that cockpit tub so it doesn't fall out. So just one quick stripe right there. All right, and now we have one other piece we need to go ahead and test fit. We'll put the seat in there as well. I also wanna make sure that we get the instrument panel in there so that we have a really good idea of how this is all gonna to go together and how much you really are gonna see when looking down into the cockpit. And we need to go ahead and put the insert that covers the top of the fuselage. So now let's go ahead and try to fit this on. And I'm gonna to have to do some work with this. As you can see, it already fell backwards into the model. A little bit of a close-up here, you can see that the coping right there underneath where the windscreen would go actually forces everything back into the seat. So what I'm thinking about doing is doing some modifications maybe to the front windscreen area. There isn't any detail under here either, and from what I can tell, there should be a lot more detail than we have. But we're going to have to really do some work on this. Again, it's not going to be accurate, but I think we can give it a little bit better approximation by putting some work into it. So I went ahead and quickly went into my spares box and I pulled out a ton of potential parts and pieces that I can use. For example, this might look familiar. This is the leftover photo etch from my special hobby G55. You can see they've got these really cool little side metal sections here. I'm not really sure what they are, but it doesn't matter. We can go ahead and glue them down to the inside of the sidewall, which would give a little bit of interest. It won't be accurate, but at least it'll be a little bit more fun to look at than what we have currently. So let's go ahead and queue up that time lapse, gather all the parts and pieces we can, and just see what we can do. Let's do it.
All right, everybody. Wow, that was a lot of work. And I'm just putting the last finishing touches here on the ejection seat by adding just a random photo etched lever. I don't know if this would actually be on the real ejection seat or not, but this thing does not look like it's supposed to. I just got to tell you, I mean, it's not going to either. Only way I could make that happen is if I go out and I'll buy a resin seat and then just replace it. But I don't want to do that. I want to see what I can do out of the box. That's always fun for me. So we're just adding one little random photo etch lever on this side of the ejection seat. It just gives it some interest. It looks better than having nothing there at all. And it's not going to be the most accurate kit out there either. So I'm just going to have fun with it. Now here is the cockpit tub as it stands right now with the ejection seat just dropped right on in there. As you can see, I think it looks a lot better. We've got some side consoles, we've got some switches and some dials, went ahead and scratch built some wiring. I like it. I think it looks a lot better than what it came with right out of the box. And again, it didn't take too long to do. I even added some rudder pedals in there, which probably aren't correct, but you can see a little bit of a rudder pedal when you look at some of the reference photos. So I wanted to go ahead and add those in just in case you end up catching a little glimpse of them here and there. I mean, this thing has parts from a G55, it has parts from a KA84, it has parts from my FJ2 Fury, it has leftover parts from a bunch of different model kits, including I think a Panzer III and maybe even a KV1. And it may not be 100% accurate, but I think honestly, it looks a lot better having some action, having some detail, just something to look at. Placing the front instrument panel inside, we can see I think it looks a lot better. I've actually covered up the old holes for that panel and I've moved it a little bit farther towards the front of the actual cockpit tub. And I think it's got a lot more character. I think it looks a little bit less cramped, but still giving that kind of claustrophobic appearance that a lot of the SU-15s had. It's not perfect, but I think it looks okay. So right around there, I think it would be perfect if we can go ahead and figure out a way to go ahead and get this installed. I think it's gonna look a lot better. Now, of course, this adds one more complication and that's how to install this into the fuselage. Now, looking at a bit of a close up here, we can see that when we go ahead and install that cockpit tub into the fuselage, it will come in contact with the front windscreen as it stands right now. So all of this has to go ahead and be removed and scratch built. I don't mind doing that because I think what we have here in the kit is woefully under detailed. So we should have some fun adding in some parts and pieces and seeing what we can do. But I think that should do it for today. Until our next episode, everybody, thank you so much for watching. You guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here on episode three, the NATO versus Warsaw Pact group build. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.